ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله <coughs> when our 13th lesson here in tajweed salam alaykum shaykh kif halak Alhamdulillah. We are doing, we just finished the lessons with regards, and I don't have any, pa- oh, I do have paper. We finished the lesson dealing with the wagunna meem and thumma noonin shuddida wa sammi kullil harfa gunnatin bibbada. And that deals with the noon and the meme, right? When they come, mushaddad, with the shadda on them. Remember that? And we mentioned here in this lesson that gunna, gunna is from the, the, the makeup of noon and meme. And that's why it's such a short chapter. You know, that ghunna is part of noon and ghunna is start of meme. And you hear it more when you have the mushadda. Then we went over this little sign right here. What is this little sign? What is that? It's a shadda. It means shadda. What does it do to a letter? Strengthen. strengthen. So shadda means strengthen. But what is this right here? It's a scene? No, it's not a scene. What is it? Sheen. It's the letter Sheen. It's actually this letter right here with the three diacritical points. But what has happened? The tail has been cut off and the has gone away. The diacritical marks have been taken away. The same thing we see when we see with a sukun. We see a sukun. What is that? That's a sukun. We see it all the time. But what is it actually? No, it's not a ha. What is it? A kha. It's a kha. Right? It represents the word khalin. Okay, or khali, khali, which means to be, you know, khilwun, to be um, void of, not to have something. Okay, what it represents is not to have what? A vowel sound. Okay, when we see it over a letter, it means that the absence of a vowel sound. And that's what we see over the letters. And when you write freehand, it's written like this, right? Just a regular circle. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kif halakum. So we see that all the time. And the reason people write it as a circle as opposed to a khaw, because they don't really know what that is, number one, and it's easier to write with the circle. But now you know what it is. You follow me? I want to see blank faces and I don't want to see moths running around and stuff like that. I want to hear fahm. Because if you understand, remember our intention here is not to teach you, yourself, and you, only you. Our intention here is ya'umul baraka, is that people, each one, teach one. As you learn, you go and you spread this out to other people on firm Knowledge, ala basira, on knowledge, okay? And remember, we mentioned earlier, or as a sidebar issue, uh, let's go over here, that, you know, to know something, alima, to know something, to gain knowledge, what does that mean? What does it mean to to gain ilm, okay? Alima ya'lamu ilman, so you have ilm. What does it mean to have knowledge? Oh, you had your hand up? Yeah, what does it mean? What does it mean to know something? Yes. Okay, but I want, it, I want it something different then. I want a practical meaning of what does it mean when you learn something. What it means when you learn something is that something has become wadih. Okay, something has become clear. Okay, that is the basic bottom line with knowledge. Something, there's no more shock because there's how many levels of knowledge? Huh? How many levels? Six. Six. The highest of them is ilm. And it is to recognize and to know something the way it is in reality. Okay? To know something and to see it and to understand it the way it is in reality. Ala haqiqa. Okay? The way it actually is. The first step is what? This is jahl. Jahl basit. Simple, basic ignorance. And what is jahl basit? Come on, guys. This is, these are the issues that you need to know as we go through these issues over here. Okay? Jahl basit which is basic ignorance, it's just not to know something in kuliya, bil kuliya. You're not to know something completely. Who knows math? Raise your hand. One plus one is what? Okay, you don't have to think about it. Who can tell me about quantum physics? So we are jahl. We're ignorant. Jahl basit. Because the thing about someone who's ignorant about something, he knows he doesn't know that thing so well. If we sit through it, we might be able to understand some of it. Right? If we go slow and stuff like that and we understand the terminology, we might be able to follow it somewhat, but we still be ignorant of how to use it and what the purpose of it all is. That's jahl basit. What's the next stage of knowledge? Jahl murakkab. Murakkab. Jazakum Jahl murakkab is from the word rakaba. When you ride a horse, tarkabuhu. 
right? Jahl muraqab is ignorance on top of ignorance. Why? What is that? How does that go? It's when someone is ignorant of something in kulliya, however, he's ignorant of the fact that he's ignorant of that thing. For example, sometimes a student listens to a lesson, he thinks he understood, then he goes away and he teaches it, but he's wrong. And if you tell him, no, you're wrong, he says, no, 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 I'm right. So he's ignorant of what he's teaching, and he's also ignorant of the fact that he's ignorant of the thing that he, he, he wants to know. Do everybody understand that? That's ignorance on top of ignorance. Jahl muraqqab. It happens all the time in class when people raise their hand and say, I know, I know, and they get it wrong. Very simple. What's the next step? <coughs> to wahm, wahm. Wahm, which is to be in confusion. To be a little confused. It is to recognize something the way it is, but to have more information that says, well, you know, it's not actually that way. The best way to understand it that I do is, is that I remember is go back to the Shi'r al-Jahaliyyah, poetry of Jahaliyyah of Zuhair ibn Abi Sulma, Mu'allaqat al sabah you know, the, the, the Mu'allaqat, the ones that they used to hang on the Kaaba. They didn't actually do it, but they get known for doing that. And these seven poems, you know, Shaykh al-Albani said you should recite them and learn them. And all the different shiukh, they talk about learning them so it help you in your Arabic. One of the lines in this poems is, وَقَفْتُ بِهَا مِنْ بَعْدَ عِشْرِينَ حِجَّةً فَلَا يَنَرَفْتُ دَارًا بَعْدَ التَّوَهُّمِ He said, وَقَفْتُ بِهَا مِنْ بَعْدَ عِشْرِينَ حِجَّةً I stopped by her house after عِشْرِينَ حِجَّةً What is عِشْرِين? 20. What is حِجَّة? Hajjahs. Right? I stopped by a house after 20 hajjahs. How many years is that? 20. It's poetry, guys. He's trying to say, I stopped by there after going to hajj 20 times. 20 years have gone by. I ain't been there in a long time. Falayan, so slowly, araftu dara, I recognized her house, bada tawahumi, after being confused. Who's going back to their old neighborhood? You go back to your old neighborhood in New York and you don't even recognize it anymore. Everything's changed. I remember I used to live in Tanta in Egypt before they made the streets and you used to garbage was everywhere and you have to wear boots in the summertime after rainy season because it was so much mud. And then when they put down a blacktop, it looked so much nicer, you know, the, the, the tar. And now the street looks totally different. You could get confused if you go back there. Or you remember New York when they had the cobblestones in the 70s and now they have the streets and you see the lines where they used to have the trolleys go through. That's, that's back there, you know. So now it looks different. So, wahm is when you understand a thing, but you're still confused about it, okay? It's like to know something 30% of it, and 70% you're still confused. That's a type of knowledge. But you're not jahl. You're not totally ignorant of it, and you're not thinking that you know it when you actually don't. What's the next step? Shek. Jazakumullah khair. Shek is the next step. It is doubt. It's literally doubt. But see, there's a difference between shek and raid. Okay? Because we, we translate both these as doubt in the English language. They translate rabe as doubt. We say, ذلك الكتاب لا رايب فيه. No? No doubt about it. But rabe here and is different from shak. Shak is doubt with regards to facts. Straight up facts. You don't get your facts right. أشكو في ذلك. I'm doubting about whether that's right or wrong. Rabe is doubt with regards to trust. Do you understand the difference? You say, yeah, that's suspicious. And I have a raid. You, do you guys understand the difference between trust and the facts? Right there? So there's a difference in there. And they both mix into each other, but we're talking about the inclination of one over the other. So shack here is to understand something 50% of the way, the way it is, and then have equal information saying it's the opposite way. Okay? So you're doubting in that thing. You don't understand it the way it's supposed to be, but you understand it the way it is supposed to be too. But, you know, if you're supposed to go down the street this way, why do I remember the fire hydrant on this side? Okay? Now, what's the next stage? Come on, you've been helping out all this time. It's dhan. In the Bible, dhan is ifm, but this one is not ifm. Okay. Component ignorance, I'm sorry? What is the English for the dhan? Dhan is to, um, it's assumption. What is dhan? How do we say dhan in English? Somebody tell me. R huh? Preponderance. The preponderance. No, we don't say that word. What? Is, give me a word. Come on, Shabir. You look around. Right, tell me, Zun. What is Zun? What? Tell me, Zun. Ah, you know, people. Y'all don't know. What is? I think they swear they say that in English. But what is? Give me a word that means Zun. We say we say. Huh? I 